hard. One, two, oh, there we go. All right, we got everything right now. Yeah. Three. So it's really got a free bump up from 60 to 100 megabits down to, uh, from Spectrum, which was nice. Meant it to, like, upgrading Yeah, I can go on the cheaper. What? 60 to 100. Wow. For, for free. You still just need the, um, Doxus 3 for that. Huh? Welcome. I don't know what Nembodium is required. Oh, they've got, like, a list. But... Because like when I bought mine, it was to be good enough to go up to a certain speed. I think it was way over 100. Probably is the time cable. And if you go to the Spectrum band, you just kind of gotcha. gotcha. She's like, I can get you in a good plan, but it'll be the same price. Oh, the Lord. And then I looked at all the channels we've been trying to have. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. 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 now my problem is not having it. Because it's like, it's not like you can get along with it. Stars for three months. Oh my god. <laughs> no, I gave you more. <laughs> yeah, right. Mission complete. Um, yeah, so I want to try to switch over from Time War to Spectrum. And hopefully I want that. And then my bill was the same price. And they never switched me over, so that to refund my account. So my next bill will be smaller. But it was this whole thing. It was I told you to contact to call us. And now I'm having issues with that where yeah. every now and then it'll randomly oh, just connect like a box and shit. Yeah. Okay. It won't disconnect. Yeah, I'll turn the something. device on and it won't connect like that. I don't see a network that. No? Wait, I think. Which, which I've tried. Oh, 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 I have one and they have to come up on my wife's phone and stuff. Of course, like, wait, yeah, yeah, I'm not going to have to that where I can get an IP though. Because my my Xbox 360 is not going to get an IP though. And if I turn it off, Normal. Yeah. You have a 101 tax support. Tax support. I'm trying to color brand of photos. I really like them. You gotta make sure you have all the firmware updates. Yeah, I haven't looked at it all because I've been busy. I'm like, I'll get to it eventually one of these times where I get to know it enough. Justin and I had an initial spot when we switched over to Spectrum. I figured it was something like that, but I just didn't have around to it. So I at least look it up, so. Yeah. Um, the, there's two things. Want to up, make sure your firmware's updated. Yeah. And then I would just turn off IPv6 because it's really buggy. Uh, uh, yeah, until you're forced to have IPv6 coming from the outside to your modem. What's yeah. the point of even? Yeah, it's, just, it, there, it's, it's seriously like It's a like the first thing I turn off on every printer we get in. We always like go through all the protocols. You know, I don't find it too hard to deal with. It's got a lot of good features, but really, they just they should have just expanded IPv4 so that. Okay, so. You know, that brothers are. I'm looking at some stuff. That special is on Steam, and they've got like tags about what the game is. It's like, okay, Dying Lights, survival of the world. Got it, all right. Darkest Dungeon, turn-based combat, dark fantasy, RPG. And then there's one that's submerged. It's exploration. And the second tag is female protagonist. Which, you know, I guess if they had to go over and hide. Yeah, whatever. Yeah. It's cool, you know. I mean, I'm, I'm glad for them that it has a female protagonist. They wore those in games, but the fact they had to highlight it is just like, okay. <laughs> there's a woman in this my, one. Yeah. It's Brian Barnes, not Hobby 3D. Oh, there he is. Actually, I think they killed your uh, account because I think he was your name. Alright, let's uh, try calling. What? Hurts too much now? Still hurts too much? So we just switch it back in like a month and wait six months for me to cancel it again? Or are they That's a funkier it? version of the. Uh, I like that. Thing. Bump, ba -da, ba -da, ba -da, ba -da. Brian, can you hear us? Did you hear us? This is the real question. Why, yes, hey, now yes, I can! Yes, yeah. <laughs> All right, Brian, so we're going to go around the table and introduce ourselves. We'll go over the uh, the layout of the show, and then we will launch into the live. Um, oh, yeah. 
The show actually airs on Thursday or Friday this week. It'll be on Friday. It's going to be a Xenox double ender. Right, but we actually do the. Double ender. A double ender. We or a GP. The, but we, we do it out live tonight. So I'll go ahead and start with. I'm Rob. I'm Tyler. Travis, nice to meet you guys. Ryan. And of course, me, Tom. All right, so um, the, the format of the show goes as follows. We're going to go ahead and open the show up. We'll do, we'll say, and tonight we're here with, and you'll go with your names, and then we'll say, and you are with, and you'll go CD Systems, and then we will, then we're going to launch into Beer Court, where we'll review a beer, and then after Beer Court, we'll go into the question and answers. Okay. All right? Right on. All right. Question. Yes. Uh, um, is there any way we can see you guys through video feed right now? Or is it not no way. Uh, you can, we, It'll be a little bit slow. We stream this out live, but you can find us on Facebook, YouTube, or on Twitch. Oh, yeah. The, About a three-second delay. So can see right. You guys. There, there will be a small delay on those, sta on those stations. Okay. But at least you get a chance to see what we're doing on this side, knowing that we're flipping you off any particular time. <laughs> <laughs> on, on Twitch, Twitch, you'll see the best question. Yeah, Twitch. Oh, no, Twitch, no, no, no. no. Yeah, don't go on the Twitch <laughs> channel. That tends to devolve into all sorts of things you really don't want to see because they can't be unseen. Most of the is toxic. Oh, there's a show tonight, says, says Matt. Blow me, Matt. Wait, <laughs> where, are where are you? Bro, are you the same thing we do every Tuesday right. night, Matt. Right. So, all right, so we are about to go live. We're, just, we're getting the, the finishing touches on that. Oh, yeah, we are technically semi-live. We are probably semi already doing a pre-roll on well. the stream. Yeah, if you want to check out the pre-roll, you can hear us chit-chatting in the background. Like I said, the actual uh, the actual edited version will drop on Friday. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, we, Rob does some editing. <laughs> this one's got to be heavily edited because we were so drunk during the last one. I had to take the second half of it. <laughs> we started a new show. Yeah, like, <laughs> spinoff where I'm just like no holds barred. So. That was rough. Somebody said we were swearing too much. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> really? Yeah. yeah. I love this. This beer has. Which is unusual because usually we're pretty. Did we just do one? Back. It has a description of all their other beers, but not this one. <laughs> Are you kidding? <laughs> all right, we'll have to find. We'll see if we find it. This but didn't we just do one by them? Yeah. By Victory Brew? On Sunday. Yeah. Sour Saturday. Beer. Saturday. Was Saturday. it? Saturday. Yeah, Saturday. Oh, okay. I didn't know that. I was, yeah. Yeah, that's why. All right. Okay. Tell Matt to drive in. He'll be here right by the end, he said. All right. Good. <laughs> <laughs> Can't believe I ever had to put my... It's because this one was done like a week ago. All right. We were 100% sure what was going on with it yet. We're, we're, I was thinking it was going to bring out pumpkin spice ale. Ugh. Oh, it would take you off. Yeah. While you weren't here. Oh, well, thank God. That's the only time. Hey, no, wait, wait, wait. The, yeah, the only time I want any pumpkin spice here is when I'm not on the show. Hey guys, I think we should just do a couple weeks. Uh, like, we There's have no pumpkin beer. spice buffet. No, no, no. Yeah, we no. bring enough beers for everyone else, just and a pumpkin spice beer for Tom. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be funny, actually. I fucking hate pumpkin spice uh, beer. Uh, I'm with you, Tom. Yeah. Thank you. I had a bad experience. Yeah, yeah. I, I, think we should go back. I don't like it, but I'll time. bite that bullet. <laughs> it touched. Yeah, it touched me in the bad place. <laughs> show me on the dollar and touch me, Tom. Show me on the dollar. I'll show, I'll show you. Alright, I'm going to connect Facebook now. Alright. I said I'm going to connect Facebook now. <laughs> I'm just not tweeting. I'm going to connect Facebook I'm, now! I'm just tweeting out here. Just sitting there. Oh, wait, yeah, it's thinking about it. Chris, should I get more beer while we're just saying that? Yeah, should we get the beers now? Yes, get the beers now, because we'll do beer court right after we do our introduction. Okay. Well, give, give us one minute. You got okay. it. That's all right. We're on pre roll now. We'll get the pre roll, beer roll. The glass, yeah. yeah. Two glasses. Yeah. I put more on either. We're the worst. <laughs> There's like, there's like more people on this. I know. You invited me, but then it just appeared. So, did it? Facebook might be on the So, we uninvited you. Yeah, then you should probably not be here. You bad bitches! Drag me out! What city are you guys in? We are based out of Racine, Wisconsin. It's all right, right on. just south of Milwaukee. Wisconsin. Yeah. It's the drunkest city in the nation. Yeah, we, uh, we are right Drunk up there. Yeah. When it comes to booze, we, uh, we know how to drink. And yeah, how about this that one? Oh, oh, cool. Where? Beckwon. Beckwon. Oh, North so Milwaukee. He is an ex-local boy. Oh, nice. Yeah. Yep, there's Laura. She's in. Hi, Laura. Oh, 
have the stats in here. Oh. Should I be rolling or anything? Yeah, you might want to go ahead and... Should I be doing my job? It's a thought. Recording is on. GTP pre-roll on. And three, two... They have, they're getting it. One. Yeah. 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 Live from your parents' basement, your mom let us in. It's guys, gays, and beer! Woo! Yeah! Woo! So, following up with all these interview shows we've been doing, guess what we have again tonight, Rob? <gasps> is it an interview show, job? It's an interview show, Rob! This is crazy. I know! No we have another interview. People watch us and they still come on the show. What? I know. It's, all <laughs> it's a pretty scary thought. At least we haven't so interventions they... yet. <laughs> <laughs> intervention calls in. Mm. I'll call intervention. All right, today with us is Chris. Hi, Chris. And Brian is fetching beer still. <laughs> Smart man, Brian. <laughs> Smart man. Fetch that beer. Uh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I got to bring up. So I take it Brian's playing beer bitch tonight? He is, yep. Sweet. All right, well, they're here from... Kind of left on the right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you guys are with... Brian? Chris! All right, sorry, now we're both plugged in. Okay, <laughs> so you're with... Real. Okay, now there's five people here. A second ago, oh. I swear, we, there are only four names. What is... There was only four names. We, have a, we had somebody else walk in. So that's the way the show goes. People wander <laughs> in. Homeless guys off the street come wandering in. It's typical for this show. So, uh, so again, it, it, we've got Chris and Brian, and you guys are with? CD System. All right, and so uh, mm. go ahead and run, give us a quick rundown. What is CD System before we do beer court? CD is a affordable uh, new project on Indigo that is a game console that lets you play CD-ROM games right off the disc. Um, basically... Uh, if you go on our Indiegogo page, you can read all about it, and it's a little unit. Um, it has an optical drive inside of it, and um, the idea is that um, you can get it and you can play your games from PlayStation 1, um, TurboGrafx CD slash PC Engine CD, Sega CD slash uh, Mega Drive CD, and uh, Neo Geo CD. Um, stipulation, calling it out right here. Some of these things in our current plan, uh, some of these game consoles will require you to copy the BIOS file, much like any other emulator that is out there right now works. Um, uh, just calling that out there, saying it like <laughs> it is. Um, sure. we, we are exploring options about that, but I mean, that's the asterisk right now. Um, I think a lot of people aren't going to care, um, but that's what it's all about. And then, and then gonna, it can do other stuff. I mean, you can listen to audio CDs, you can... Um, uh, play other ROMs and stuff. You can rip your CDs, all sorts of fun stuff. So do you yeah. just... Uh, yeah, Yeah, so just whipping that out, putting it on the table, making sure everybody sees it before. Okay, so, yeah. Wait up. We, we can get into talking just, about we'll it. We'll get into talking about it more now that they've given the, the rundown. But well, we need to start have, with... We have beers, and they've got beers. Yeah, and we have a special beer tonight because, in this case, the uh, our, our, our interview guests have actually suggested something from their neck of the woods. Well, let's do the intro first. Oh. Ready? That's some sort of topsy turvy world where we're throwing things all out of We order. certainly are. So what is on beer court tonight, Ryan? Uh we grab Victory Brewing Dirt Wolf Double IPA. We recently had another Victory beer, the sour uh, ale that Matt brought in, and it was good. I liked, I liked it. And it was by Victory, so uh, I guess we're doing a double feature, right? So, so yeah, so literally, so the, both episodes that we're gonna kind of mosh together here will both be Victory Brewing, and they'll pretty much be back to back because we did it at the end of the episode. Yes, right? yeah, exactly. So yeah. it's gonna <laughs> end with one and start with another. So you guys are also doing Dirt Wolf tonight, right. Chris, or or and or Brian. Yeah, yeah. we are. Yeah. All right, so you. So what we're going to do, the, the way Beer Court works for us is um, we all try it. We can make any kind of comments, snide or otherwise, that, about the beer that we are going to do. Um, we normally just do a simple thumbs up, thumbs down. You can do a thumb in the middle if you think it's kind of Take okay, it but nothing spectacular. Um, we will ask your question when we're done. Oh, Travis, you're going to get fancy on us. I like with you. Snide 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 so, so, so he's pouring it into a cup. You can taste what counts for smell. I know. Come I know. on. All right, all right. So uh, That's it. Hell yeah, victory. 
Yeah, uh, Matt. All right, so let's, let's go ahead and... What's that? Yeah, so, okay, so a couple of observations that you made about this beer before we started, because we always talk about stuff off the show. They don't have the description for the beer on this in the, on this box or on the bottle, do they? Uh, I don't know they got it here. Darkly heroic, humulus lupus <laughs> hops. Have Ooh. empowered brews with bite and character since the 11th century. Dirt Wolf is a tribute to these untamed vines, which rise from the earth with the veracity of a wolf among sheep. Hops have made an assertive comeback in American craft beer. They're not wrong there. Revel in the best U.S. variety of hops in their natural whole flower form as they bring a vital, pungent reality to the sour of a wild <laughs> element and a dangerously satisfying Dirt Wolf. Cheers. They really have fun. Some, yeah, somebody had way too much time on their hands writing that out. <laughs> so, uh... Just gonna put that out there. Okay, let's give it a try and see what we got here, good. guys. It smells happy. It's a double IPA, I guess. You, you expect it. Well, it's a good thing I monitor our pairs at the G2B hotline went hmm. back on. the hell? Um, I'm okay with that. For an IPA, that has a really smooth taste to it. There's not a real strong bite on that at no, all. No, no, you put between you, the hops. So there. The hop flavor is definitely But it's not, it's not a bitey hop. It doesn't no. coat your yeah, tongue. Yeah. And yeah. Like, not like I might real. be able to drink a different beer after this. Yeah, and, and I don't just taste <laughs> this the rest of the evening. I, I gotta say, that's not bad. Yeah. The sour, you guys gave the sour a pretty good rating, too. Mm -hmm. if I yeah, the sour was unanimous across the Again, I don't like traditionally like sour beers, man, but. I gotta say, I'm, I'm not, and I'm not big on double IPAs. I'm not big on an IPA. Okay, no, I think we've, I think we've got another like three flight style situation. Like they'll make beers that I don't traditionally enjoy, but they'll do them well enough that I think I can say, hey, yeah, yeah, I can yeah. work with this. What about you, Chris, or and or Brian? It's all about the wolf, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Hungry like the wolf. <laughs> it's it's, it's Victory's best beer. Really? Yeah. Okay, let's well, go to either this or Storm King, the Imperial Stout. I've actually right, had that one. That one is delicious. Is it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So maybe yeah. Maybe that is the case. They just. This beer was too nice to still start drinking. Stuff. I agree. I, I, I stop like almost seven. I, I'm not a big stout drinker in the first place, but if I'm going to, it's going to be cold weather. I, it's it's still kind of nice out any here. Any time of the year. Winter is coming. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 It's 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 going to be fall. You know, you're going to get one of these. This is a solid beer. No. Yeah. We gotta watch out. And uh, this was best drunk by. It's supposed to be best drunk by July, so, so this is <laughs> a little overdue, and it still tastes great. All right, I, I have to ask. What's Eight, the? Uh, eight, seven. Eight, oh, it's high. Yeah. So okay. we gotta watch out with these. Yeah, this, too. this, this is one that I think to sneak up on you. And then yeah, yeah, it's really good. So yeah, out of a uh, out of Darlington, Pennsylvania, it's. Uh, I'm gonna have to say. It's so do they give brewery tours? as our next question. Um, I have not been on one personally. I'm not sure. Huh. Well, uh, again. <laughs> Solid stuff. Yeah, All right, I think I know what our votes are going to be. Yeah, I'm going to go thumbs up on this Rob's one. Pretty Victory is two for two, over, man. Okay, how, okay, how about you guys? Thumbs up, thumbs down, or in the middle? Up. Uh, up. Uh, middle. There we go. Middle. Oh, really? <laughs> wow, we have one dissenter tonight. Who Was that Brian? That's Brian. Fucking Brian. Fucking <laughs> <laughs> Brian. <laughs> We've used that line before. <laughs> I just, I'm just not my big guy at all. Yeah, okay, hops. Yeah, hops are kind of. Yeah, but that, that again, either I'm not a big IPA guy either. But here's the thing: this is not a really bitter IPA. Like I said, it doesn't have that bite though, like most IPAs no. have. I, I get the yeah. hops. I taste the hops. IPA. But for yeah, it's it's probably one of the best IPAs I've had as far as. Again, I, I've got the same thing as beer. This is not something I'm going to order, but I can still appreciate a good beer. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree. I, it, it, it's not something I would go out of my way to order, but you know, if, if somebody put it out in front of me, I'm sure the fuck drinking it. Drinking it right now. All right, okay. Judge Rob, let's pass verdict on this thing. Not quite unanimous, but damn close. Thank you. Damn, Brian. <laughs> it's all your fault. Classic Brian. Yeah, yeah, you, that, that was a Brian move. Just going to put it out there. <laughs> oh, yeah. That is. Very sweet. We say everything like that. You're a cheap seat. I appreciate that fun. All right, Judge Rob, pass verdict on this beer. Count one, ale in a public... What? <laughs> what? Whoa, 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 wrong verdict, wrong, wrong verdict. <laughs> no, no, I'm, pre I'm pretty sure. That was in the pregame. Okay, that, that was kind of in the yeah. pregame, yeah. That was pretty bad. And? Uh, guilty as fuck. It is the dirt wolf. Count two, going a hop too far, I find you not guilty. Just hoppy enough, sir. Two hops is hops enough. Uh, sentence on the first charge is... Oh, what do you think the charge should, what should, what should be the sentence, guys? We all get to watch. <laughs> <laughs> He's still waiting for that I, one. You set it up, I had to hit it home. Oh, I sentenced you to drinking. All right, sentenced to drinking. All right, so let's get back to what we're actually here for tonight. We are here to talk about a project which uh, 
Yeah, me and, yeah which me and Rob have already jumped onto, and you have already described a little bit. But um, go, we're going to go ahead, and I'm going to have you one more time go over. The company name is CD, and that's S-E-E-D-I. Um, really kind of a cool idea going on here. Um, one more time, go ahead, let's go into what's got you guys going on this. I mean, I've seen your, all your demo videos and so on, but what, what made you think that this was a, a, something to pursue? So uh, basically, about a couple of years ago, um, I got really uh, obsessed with all the CD-ROM games that were out in the 90s, basically. like I actually did not grow up playing PlayStation 1. That just wasn't what I had at the time. And like, but I got, but a couple years ago, I got totally fascinated, like, like some sort of nerd uh, trigger inside of my head was like fascinated all about it, all around the different things that were happening. And like the games and the media itself, like CD-ROM was just such a huge technological development. Like the fact that there's a spinning piece of plastic, lasers reading the little bits off of it, like just really, really amazing technology that came out, you know, at the late '80s, and there was these like awesome, you know, like super high quality sound, and just the whole, the whole CD-ROM, CD optical disc thing, like, kind of took me over. Um, and then I was, and I researched all these obscure uh, consoles that I'd never heard of before, like the Philips CDI and like uh, the Turbo Duo, and like there's, and I was really into laser disc, and. Um, you know, I was, I was really interested in all this stuff. And then I was like, all right, I guess I'll play some of these games. So, like, how am I going to play some of these games? And, uh, I, and I, didn't, I didn't find myself up with a lot of good options. It was like, okay, I can putz around with, like, a, all these different emulators. I can basically buy all the different consoles and, like, somehow find the space, which I don't have to use them. <laughs> and then uh, the more I explored into the available technology, the more... Uh, I found that I could like centralize this thing, and I kind of like I was like basically designing this this product for myself of like okay like how can I basically just pop in a game into like a little thing and just and just go with it and have it work and um, and I did a lot of uh, you know tech, uh, technical kind of like R and D and um, hacking and stuff and basically got it working and then I realized like wow this is awesome. This would be this would be actually useful for other people, uh, and I should try and sell it. And so that's and that led to one thing or another. I talked to started talking to Chris about the idea. Um, originally, it was more of like a it wasn't you know like we went through multiple iterations of like the concept until we baked it into like something that is like a self-contained unit that a customer could actually just pick up and, and basically use with minimal setup. Okay, so that, again, that's kind of what attracted us to this whole project. We're big retro guys. So, I mean, and when we say big retro guys, literally all of us in our houses have at least a basement, a room, something dedicated to retro gaming. I mean, um, part of what our shtick is, is we all are big collectors. And I think, the, like you said, it's kind of cool, but a lot of the systems are hard to come with. Every system you mentioned, by the way, we own. Um, <laughs> That's awesome. Sad. No, no, it's, it's sad. sad. It really I, is sad. I, I, Do they still work them? Yeah. You, you well, with me. We are, we are, yes. There there comes the, the Travis to far so, the point. Yeah, and again, I, I think the CD, initially when I heard about it, I was like, okay, you know, it, it didn't really strike me off the bat. But I, the more I thought about it, I thought it was a really kind of interesting area to focus on. For a couple of reasons. Um, first of all, again, like you said, it was a very big shift in gaming, switching over to optical media. I mean, people were doing some really crazy stuff when you expanded, you know, from the mega few megabytes you had on a cartridge to, like, you know, hundreds of megabytes on a CD. Um, so it's like people really tried some, like, daring stuff, you know, adding in big motion cut scenes or playing around with 3D graphics, things like that. Um, the other thing I, I, I did notice about, like, having an optical-based system that can play... Uh, a lot of different things you can throw at it is some of those first gen optical consoles. You know, you're looking at your PlayStation, your CDI, Sega CD. Um, they don't read discs very well anymore. Like, even if they're maintained, like, CDs are very finicky. Um, yeah. So, you know, having having another platform to play those on with, with newer technology. I remember, again, there were sometimes you were spending. A half hour, you know, trying to get a game to work, or like you're like turning your PlayStation. I was just gonna say, down, literally, when when Travis was a kid, he had a PS One, 
So yeah. I'm, I'm Travis's dad, by the way. So, but when Travis was a kid, he had a PS1, and eventually it stopped working. So I literally built a stand out of a dish rack. It was like one of those <laughs> wire dish racks. I cut the middle on so you could flip yeah. the CD. I'm uh, sorry, the uh, the, yeah. the PlayStation original PlayStation over right and put the CD yeah, in and play yeah. upside down. It worked. It worked awesome. Well, yeah, I mean, like it, for those early optical media systems, again, there's a, there's a lot of fun to around. And again, with CDs uh, being the earliest kind of optical media, some of that generation is a starting to get like like less reliable as a media source because yeah. they degrade yeah. over time. Mm-hmm. So you're gonna need you need uh, again something with a newer with a newer components and things like that are gonna be a little more reliable on reading that data. Well, and even the the fact of keeping your media intact. I mean, so Travis Travis is a big collector of media. Um, yeah, when it, I collect probably more physical games than other people. But a lot of these, a lot of yeah. people do like this. Right, and, and I'll get into that more. But Travis is a, is a media collector. The, th- the thing is, and this is something that really was attractive to me about your project, is it saves wear and tear on your media. I'm sorry, every time you take that CD out of the case You're spinning and, it around and put it in your old system, heaven forbid your old system starts know. screwing up and that head... Those auto-focusing heads adjust up and slam against the bottom of your CD. Oh, it's happened. Trust me, Play more than a few uh, times. Dreamcasts are, Dreamcasts are notorious for yeah. that. Yeah. Oh, and the other, yeah. The other thing too is again, like with even just sitting around. I mean, like I love collecting for the Dreamcast, but I have plenty of discs that are just going bad from sitting there. I know. The, well, most of those discs. It's its own, its whole yeah. thing. Yeah. Right. The foil. The foil separates on the inside. They only have. People don't realize CDs have a very yeah. short shelf life. Yeah, but uh, again, some of those earlier models. I mean, you're looking realistically on average about ten to fifteen. Years. Yeah, yeah, and then the CD starts to degrade. And, so and burn a copy of that. And there page. is nothing. There is nothing. Yeah, you can well, do about it, yeah. but but there's there's something interesting again about your product. Not only does it allow you to play your original CDs, it allows you to. You can down, I mean, you can rip them and you can burn them. Right. So you can make copies of your original CDs and reuse them without ever having to touch the original CD. So you can create an image using your system and then burn that copy again and again so that you're not... You still have the original case, you still have the original CD, but if the original CD degrades to the point where it's no longer playable, your system allows you to keep that that game up and running. Yeah. <laughs> Which is a really cool idea. The other, uh, the other big point, and like about this system that got me really excited. This again, you guys have a very cohesive, user friendly experience, like right out of the friggin' box, and your your price point is just hella good. Like no, the, the, I'm just yeah. saying, like like the fact that you can, you know, for a little over a hundred bucks, you know, get out, get something out of the box, you know, upload some uh, upload some files with instructions, and then just go, just pop a CD in and play. Yeah. Is is pretty so fantastic. for those of you who haven't been to the site yet, we'll have links all over the place, but literally right videos. now, a hundred and twenty five dollars gets you the CD. With a controller all ready to go. Wireless, wireless controller. Yeah, all ready to rock and roll. I mean, you can't buy yeah, I mean, a yeah. for that price. Yeah, and again, by the time you put something together yourself, I mean, like, you're almost yeah, at that yeah, price. Yeah, anyway. yeah, and without counting the hours and hours. Yeah, the hours around. you put into configuring it and everything, you get something like right out of the box. That's yeah. a cohesive experience, which, again, it's, it's nice and convenient to have. Like, no, sorry about some of the guys at work, but the very same thing. The fact that it squeezes all out of the box is a big sell. Maybe some people are more hardcore. They want to figure their own thing, but still, for something like this, what, for what it is, he wants something. Like, yeah, just I want give it to me so I can use it. <laughs> right. Some people don't want to screw around. Some people literally just want to take this out of the box, set it up, and go. I'm gonna say some. I'm gonna say most. <laughs> okay, most. That's, yeah, no, you're, that's right. Right. you're right. That's why the friggin' NES Classic and SNES Classic are so popular. Exactly. Right. I mean, you can friggin' build a Raspberry Pi and upload all these emulators and like get all your own configuration stuff out of there. But sometimes you just want to pick up a product and you can like. Within a few minutes, you know, again, this one's going to require a little bit of setup, but very minimal compared to setting up your own box like that. And, again, also isn't just something that's thrown together as well. Like, So you don't have just, like, this bundle yeah. of, like, Raspberry <laughs> Pi and cables, like, connecting each other. Like, okay, there we go. Yeah, don't trip over that, please. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Thank you. I've got that kind of rigged in the corner. And I like the design yeah. on it. It looks simple, sleek, and it's, yeah, it looks all nice. Oh, no, 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 feel free. We'll, we'll, we'll just talk right over you all the time. So don't worry about it, guys. <laughs> just... Chime right up. We got your volume turned up so you so we can hear you talk over us. Yeah, so I mean, um, yeah, so like Raspberry Pi, uh, I mean Raspberry Pi, we love Raspberry Pi. Uh, it's I mean that that was one of the things that we used to kind of like start prot- prototyping and stuff, but like uh where was I going with this? So, um, <laughs> you know, Raspberry Pi is great. Um, and if you have a Raspberry Pi, um, 
that's that's great and maybe you already have all this type of stuff working and you're good but you know like we're, 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 again, we're going on with this again like i mean we're it's amazing how much raspberry pi has penetrated the retro gamer market um that's one so basically one of the really common hater uh, uh trends <laughs> that we're seeing is like this is just a raspberry pi like, it's just raspberry pi like, i can do this on my raspberry pi and i mean like you can do it on your Raspberry Pi. Like, go have a nice day. Like, that's fine. Like, I mean, that is actually, like, you know, go do that. Like, okay. So we're gonna stand on the show we were we talking were, about before. Literally like, pre the show, we were talking about the haters, and, and I'll get into that more later. But just, yeah, we'll talk about the haters more. Say that anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, we got we got we have volumes to say about the haters. Trust me. So um. Yeah, but for those of us, you always have the people that know how to do all that stuff and set them up. And everything like that, where a device you have that literally can just. But it's always get the it people who have quick. like a toaster catching on fire that say that crap. I mean, <laughs> it, it's usually not because most of us like I did the, um, uh, I did the um, not eight bit though the uh, the little eight bit console. Uh, I did that that mock up for MGC last year. Oh, the Pico. The Pico. The Pico Eight. The Pico 8. Yes. And, and that was. That's a pain in the ass. That's a lot of time. You spent you, you, you a lot of time on that. So I wouldn't go if somebody was. To, well, they did. I mean, I've got. I've also got the handheld uh, Pico. It, they actually released. I'm not going to go on their site. They go. Well, I can make that with a case I bought off of Amazon. That's a bitch. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. To get it working right. To get yeah. It running smoothly, and that and that's the thing. Most people who say that stuff, they they say they've got this this thing, and then you look at the work, and it's like. All hosed up. Mine's pretty slick, and that's because it took. But you spent a lot of time. A bunch of hours into it to to hide the fact that it was a Raspberry Pi machine. Right. And that that's one of those things. I mean, it, it takes some know-how. It takes so, some do it. but anyway. So again, besides the CD-ROM emulation, we've also done a few other things on this. Um, so there's a a, a third-party product called, called the Retroid, which okay. I which is a cool product in the first place. But the way you guys have integrated it. Ooh. Oh, Explain yeah. the Retroid, please. It's the, not the Retroid is basically Retro. a uh, USB cartridge adapter. So it's a little box, you know, it can fit in the palm of your hand. And there's a Genesis slot and there's an SNES slot in it. And it has two uh, plugs for two SNES controllers and it has two plugs for two Genesis controllers. And uh, basically, the way it works with CD is you can plug it into CD. You can pop in a Genesis game, and then you can just be like, load the game, and it'll just boot right up. Load so game. like, it's an optional add-on to play your card games. Right, but besides those two, there's also a um, Game Boy adapter for the yeah. Genesis that works fine with your product as well. Yes, right. Yeah, and so I mean, um, I don't know if it would work. I, don't, I mean, that wouldn't work with a real Genesis, but basically, it like adapts the Game Boy cartridge data. It makes it accessible by the retro, which then can read it out and then again provide it to the cup to see or or whatever is plugged into. Right. So so not only is your unit able to do CD work, but you can actually use some real cartridges with it as well and build a yep. Genesis stack and build, yeah and build this so weird, nice right and build this weird oh. adapter stack where you have the uh, <laughs> the CD actually running the software, the retro plugged into it to run your cartridges, and then the Game Boy adapter plugged into that to run your Game Boy cartridges. Just if a we're few. providing options, there are options. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Always have options. But uh, so that, that product, how much does that go for the retro? Uh, I think it's 65 bucks on dragonbox.de, which is a German site, so you'll have to pay for shipping from Germany. But um uh, and you know, we were, what we've been always saying is like depending on the level of interest, we could potentially do our own run of them or and because we talked to the guys that make it and those guys are really cool we could if there was a lot of interest we could only make a run or do a bundle or something on our campaign we haven't done that yet but um we, we might we might try, try something like that out in the next week or two that would be very cool that would be very cool um again i kind of like that i i'm looking at your system more for the cd play um i as far as cartridges goes and game cartridges, like I said, Travis is more a media collector. I'm, I'm a multi-cart guy myself. Now, the reason for that is the same reason why you guys came up with this product. Wear and tear on the original systems. Um, every time you plug a cartridge in and out, it physically does abrasive damage. I know it's not a lot, but you know something? It adds up. 
especially when you're playing on a 30 and 40 year old computer system or a gaming system. So I use multi-carts. Um, it allows me to leave my cartridges in storage, have one single cartridge in there that I'm not yanking in and out all the time, especially the NES, um, that had so much mechanical movement to start with, and say so, so much work. motion again, Tom? You like that? Yeah. yeah, if you can watch my hand going up and down here. <laughs> Actually, <laughs> that wasn't the motion, Rob. That wasn't the motion. But uh, bad. Yeah. bad, bad, bad cartridge, bad cartridge. But the, the plus side of it is it does say having this allows you to play the games that you already own, rip the games you already own, and again, it's a question of saving wear and tear. Again, we love our retro systems. I mean, we really love our retro systems. We are... We go beyond obsessed with them. I mean, our collection is the, the, just between the guys in this room. That you, we literally, we do a, a, a gaming event called Midwest Gaming Classic. We literally fill a room with old systems and let we let people play them. We like having people play them, but we are always concerned about the wear and tear on them. And the nice thing about this is, for us, when we want to play a game, it allows us to do it without the wear and tear on the system. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, and I think, and I think we, uh, the we didn't realize that problem that we were solving until we had uh, started doing a little bit more research and we started reaching out to some different people. But and that, but but that's you know like that's that's kind of become one of the primary missions of CD is to like help preserve the media, help the me the physical media, the culture of putting a game in, and just. Give give gamers options to keep playing their games for as long as they can. Like the, like these these systems are dying. They're not going to be around forever, and it's like nothing else is there. So we we're filling the we're filling the gap. Yeah. So you actually fill another gap of uh, people trying to play their old uh, CD PC games <laughs> as well, which I I watched your video of how, uh, how uh, some of uh, you did uh, um, Warcraft and. Uh, the other two, yeah. like where you can actually load the, you know, get it installed and run, and, and yeah, that, that was like a that was I mean that's like an additional kind of like value add thing that we were like oh wow we can do this too, and um, because basically the, the software is there I mean we're we're using we're using open source software that has licenses that allow us to do this, and um, and you know we did a bunch of like proof of concept things, and we're like, yeah, like, this this is also something that's going to work. The one thing I want to say about the DOS um, support on the system, um, it's not going to be able to play any DOS game. Uh, in the compatibility section, we call out that it's, like, stuff, games requiring up to about a 386 DOS processor. Um, so, like, a lot of games that came out on DOS in the late, in the mid to late 90s require a 486. And, uh, you know, we wish that that stuff would run great on CD, it, it doesn't, but a lot of the DOS games do run great on CD. So, um, there's, I mean, it's not like maybe maybe in the future when we do Rev 2 of CD or whatever, we'll figure out how to do a better job with the DOS support and, and, all, and take, you know, take into account all these other features that people are, are recommending. But, um, but it is awesome to play the DOS games. Like, me, Chris and I have been waiting to do a round of Oregon Trail. Um, <laughs> Live live demo Oregon Trail, um, and I and I played I, I played uh, another world, which is one of my all time favorite games. Oh, oh yeah! Slash out of this world, the DOS version runs like a like a uh, runs like smoothness. Like a wolf. Like, like a wolf. Like a, like a dirt. Wolf. Like a dirt wolf. <laughs> yes. Because I, I think I still have some of those CDs sitting around, and you just can't play them on. I'm on a PC. I'm on a PC. No matter what you're trying to do. do it's, you know, there's it's a lot of fussing if you want to work. Like, yeah. I saw you, like, you know, you, yeah, you put the CD in, and you might have to run the install and put some of the files down. Mm -hmm. But if you just have to run the, the command to start the program and run it, I thought that was yep. pretty pretty cool. And that was Thanks. one of the things that I didn't know at first. Like, how is that going to work? Because I know some of those early CD games, like, you didn't install the whole thing. It pretty much... It ran it from the CD, right. PC piece of it, and then you, yeah, most of it... So you bought one and didn't tell the wife, didn't you? No, I didn't, yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 was the operative word there. She doesn't know. Finances and all. <laughs> well, you better, you better hope she is not watching the show tonight. <laughs> so, I'm um, not here in the chat tonight, so... <laughs> yeah, yeah, you safe. Yeah, so, so you might be safe. So, yeah, so to, uh, again, so you've included that in the DOS simulation on here, which, I, again, I think... 
was a, a, a nice touch because, like Brian was saying, so many of those old DOS games you just can't run on the new PCs. Yeah. Yo, who's going to bring out some old laptop for... Oh, wait. I said you, did. Yeah, <laughs> you did. You already did that. So <laughs> It's hard to find some of those old clunkers. It is. Like, yeah, it is. To play some of those discs anymore. True. I, uh, I promised to yell, so I'll give a shout-out. I'll give a shout-out. I, I mean, again, like, so the, the, the software we're using is called DOSBox, and that's free software. Uh, it's an amazing uh, program. Again, you just go to, I think, DOSBox.com. And, I mean, you don't need CD to do that. You can run that on a PC or a Mac or whatever, or Linux, and um, and you'll be able to do the same thing. But, I mean, it we just decided, since we're doing all this automation and integration on CD, like, Works. It works good enough. So yeah, the automation part, I think, is good because it seems like it. When I saw you do the demo, it picked up the CD. It knew to go into DOS box. Yeah. and that, that, that's and another thing is they've got lots of live videos already. They've got like five out yeah, already. Yeah, they're they they actually playing different different platforms and just switching out games and it working. Yeah. yeah, which is that's nice. It's nice to have a go use a product that once I mean once you get that out of the box setup configured. You just pop it in and it goes. It's nice. That's a nice. Thing. Yeah, that that's that's been something that's really been kind of cool to watch in this in this particular startup. Um, a lot of these kind of startups don't have the transparency you guys have. You guys have been really forthcoming with everything you're doing. Um, that's interesting. Thanks. So why did you do uh, Indiegogo versus Kickstarter? That was a. Go ahead, Nick. Oh yeah. Um, there's a bunch. If you just Google. Indiegogo versus Kickstarter. There's all sorts of comparison charts, chart. and um, basically the main reason was um, dollars raised for this type of product were higher for Indiegogo. Gotcha. Indiegogo seems to be catered more for the gadget and tech community. Kickstarter more so for like games and art projects. Oh, all right. Well, that makes perfect sense. You know, but it, but this again, this goes back down to. The transparency you guys have had on on Indiegogo. I mean, besides just having a really good listing of everything, including your flaws that you or what you consider flaws on your Indiegogo page, you know, the, having the videos you guys have put out so people can see the actual hardware, see you yeah. guys using it. Again, at, at first, at first when I heard about it, I got this synopsis. Again, it wasn't something I was generally familiar about, but the more again, the more I heard it, the more media I saw about it, and kind of just seeing that cohesive package put together. Again, I, I'm on board with it now. Like, yeah, I, guess... I mean, we're. I mean, that's one of the things is we're trying to basically build trust. Like, we're we're literally, I mean, we're li literally putting our face on it, being like, <laughs> like, this is it. Like, it works, and the reason we're here is because if we know it works and we know it's awesome, so we want to like, you know, we want it to be out there. Like, we want it to be a thing that people use that's actually useful to humans. Okay. I think um, I think given the uh, the current gaming culture, uh, um, you know, with kickstarts and uh, Indiegogo projects, I think it's best, you know, to get your face out there because it's it's been it's been a rough couple of years for projects. I think it, there's, there's been a lot. Of, and, a lot you know, of it's funny. Things. Yeah, and, but they also don't cover like all the stuff that did launch and did show up. I mean, you've got like plenty of uh, plenty of these that went really well. Well, you've backed more than a few. Yeah, I've backed more than a few. I backed a lot of hardware. <laughs> Yeah, well, you know, we're, we're, again, we like our retro gaming, we like our hardware, so we, we do tend to jump in on these projects. Rob, on the other hand, is is it just completely kind of like, that, boy. like that crazy ex-girlfriend who loves her hardware. It just doesn't end well. She shows up at your door 3 a.m. in the morning, knife and dead rabbits, just going to put it out there. <laughs> yeah, that's not even X, that's just like current girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> I've never done that. <laughs> I brought you a dead rabbit. <laughs> So, oh, <laughs> you love me now? <laughs> oh, yeah. So, um, so again, if, if for those of you who haven't seen the videos, we will have links to their videos. I'm in Wisconsin. <laughs> yeah. Sounds about oh, right. yeah. Yeah. We will have killers. links to their videos on our website as well. Um, um, gosh, where was I at here? Oh, uh, so let's talk a little bit. So, not only does the, again, it, it's kind of a nice all in one box and pretty straightforward as far as loading the CDs, let's talk about the output on that a little bit. You guys have. Uh, um, you guys have gone up to 1080p on the output, which is really amazing for one of these kind of systems. Most of them do about 7, will do 720. A lot of them do composites. Um, so the choice to do the 1080 was a nice touch. Um, how about lag on that? I mean, from what I've seen on the videos, I don't see any lag in the play um, because it's not upscaling. I take it it's playing the 1080 native. 
I mean, yeah, well, so, I mean, like, obviously, in, like, like you know, the original hardware does not create a 1080p, uh, you know, that many, like, pixels in the output, but the emulators that we're using, um, you know, fill in the gaps there, and uh, the console does output at 720 and 1080p. Um, so, I mean, so, you know, being, like, the graphics being scaled, uh, in the pipeline and then coming out at a, you know, 60 frames per second uh, rate. And, um, you know, we haven't done specific lag or measurements per se, but uh, we've, I mean, we've anecdotally played it. Like, we, we've seen lag and we have fixed lag issues. Like, you know, we've, we've been through different revs of hardware, um, especially with Bluetooth, for example, where it was like this. Something feels wrong here. This is bad. Like it is noticeably messed up. You can't play the game. Much better at Mario. <laughs> <laughs> and um, and we've solved those problems. So I mean, like, so you know, input lag is good. And um, and then and then we get to the point where it's like, yeah, there's no noticeable gameplay lag. We can play these games. We can play Parappa the Rapper. We can play the, like you know, the music timing games, and like these golf games where you have to like you know tap the tap the bar when it gets to like a certain point, and like they work. Um, and then, uh, you know, just recently, we sent our prototype unit to Sega Lord X, who is a guy on YouTube that we um, that I have been a long time fan of and um, approached a while back about the whole concept and got some early feedback on from him. But we sent him our we sent him our uh, prototype going after these things. It's like, do you feel lag with the controller? Do you feel lag on the screen? You know, like, does anything feel slow at all? And he basically was like, no. So I mean, and and I mean we played we played, we've shown it to friends and stuff, um, and again we're we're using software that is notorious for its like high performance. Um, we're using a software package called RetroArch, which, um, uh, unbeknownst to many people, is licensable uh, under the under the <laughs> uh, general public license. Haters, haters, right. haters. <laughs> so I mean like. Uh, I and I mean it, we're not happy about the situation there, but the fact is that it is li it is licensable under a license that allows us to do what we're doing, and that's what, why we decided to move forward. Yeah, that makes good sense. So, um, uh, so again, talking about the the, the 720 and the 1080. Uh, again, we use a lot of original hardware, and the problem is when you try to upscale it. As as good as some of the upscalers we use are, there's always that just slight inherent delay. And it can be really Hey, do you see mine? It's been beautiful. Yours is pretty damn good. you got a really good upscaler, well, actually. It's cheap. Yeah, yeah but... You can good, get a good... I mean, but they're, they're, doing a, they're doing it at 100 bucks. Right. So, you know. But this, this goes back down to the point. This goes back down to the point. But you got to be careful. Yeah. It's yeah. going to make or break your platform. It's going to make or break your platform. Yeah. If you're upscaling... Booyah had that problem early on. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I don't want to even relate that, but... I mean, it was a successful Kickstarter. So. Right, but it, it did have issues with lag. And it did... It did kick a whole generation of gaming, so yeah. I'll give it that. It was, you know. it, it was, it what, are you, what are you guys talking about? We were talking about Ouya. It had some significant lag issues. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I have an Ouya. I bet you that. Yeah, I, I did too, yeah. <laughs> I was oh, like, yeah. It's in my gaming room, isn't it? Mm -hmm. We've got, uh, we got a, a poster from the guys that did uh, Fist of Awesome, which uh, started out on the Ouya. Yep. There was like two of those. We have one, and the Ouya offices had another one. I'm guessing the Ouya offices don't have one anymore. anymore. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> probably not. That's probably not. Um, I mean, we're not really, we're not really trying to do what the Ouya did. You know, we're not we're yeah, not we're really have the world. vision of building out like a platform for indie developers. To, yeah, I'm not you know, uh, like have all this content. You know, like we are more like this will do its thing. I mean, we're, it, it's it, it'll be update capable, so we can put out updates. But we're not. We don't have the vision of doing that, you know. It's like specific. Yeah, I was only talking kind of for purpose. the input lag, uh, for the input okay. lag problems that they had early on that cost them a lot of. Uh, they, they cost yeah, them a lot of yeah, it, that it's it sucked. Yeah, yeah, that was that was. That was nasty, wasn't it? Yeah, early on. And my my controller had the issue where the button would get jammed into the faceplate, <laughs> and and uh, and but I contacted them and they sent me new faceplates, which is pretty cool. I mean, like they sent me new faceplates for free. Uh, and then, and, yeah, and then cool. uh, like they had a really cool controller design that you could like you know there was like magnets and stuff in there to get all the work, but but even then it just still wasn't a good controller. They gave me a whole new set of controllers because I complained about the input lag and they did work better. Okay. Um, okay. I got a video uh, on how to uh, how to fix the Ouya button thing. Yeah. Very crude. <laughs> right. But going, going down to controllers, yeah. so you guys you guys are actually 
It involves sanding. <laughs> you guys are actually using a third-party controller for yours. It's yeah. a it's 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 a PS3 style controller. Yeah. Yep. So um, again, you went through some testing and found that this one just seemed to be the best one to to use. Yeah. Um, there's a wide variety of um, third-party DualShock 3 controllers available on the market. Knockoffs so, upon knockoffs of other yeah. knockoffs. So we bought all of them basically and um, picked a good one. I like the fact you went with the wireless controller on this, and I also going into that, you guys also do have the capability though. So I used to think called the you, know, you see the Joy Boxes out of China. The May, May Flash. Jesus. Or um, Joy Box. The Joy Box. I mean, so, uh, think... Basically, it's PS uh, PS2, um, Xbox Original. And what's the third one? And uh, Sega, where you can plug any one of those three controllers into a USB con adapter. Yep. Yeah. And so I see that your your product supports yeah, those. So those are my May Flash. May Flash, <laughs> thank you. Your product supports those. Yep. Yep. The, we have a driver for that. So basically, if you want to use your original PS One controller, because <laughs> PS One and PS Two plugs are the same, and so you can just plug it right in there with no problem. So you can enjoy your Joy Box whenever you, you want. You bet. <laughs> if you want to use your original Xbox controller, you can plug it in there yeah. as well. Um, and there's and there's really cheap. Um, there's really really cheap just PlayStation to USB uh, adapters, mm -hmm. and, and I mean tip, like the ones that I've seen, they're they're like blue, that's... and uh, they've got two. It's two. They support two player. And there's just one USB cable. Yeah, that's one. You I get them for like literally five bucks. Wow. And those those work great also. I I use those for so nice. those up. Excellent. They work really nice. Yeah. Yeah, you know it's nice to have those controller options again. I know I know that the the retro has the capability of using the the straight Genesis controllers. Or the um, the straight PS um, not PS controllers. What was the other plug on those? SNES, SNES, SNES controllers. So it's got plugs for either of those. You can either use the Genesis uh, D9s or the custom SNES controller plug, which is a, a weird Nintendo only thing. But the fact is that you can plug those straight in using that as well. Um, does it support uh, any other joystick adapters? Um. Yes. Uh, so. Well, so for example, you can you can straight plug in a USB, for example, Xbox 360 controller. Um, like for example, if you have a Logitech, like an, a random Logitech gamepad or equivalent, you can plug that in there. Um, and I mean, we're using we're using a, a set a set of open source um, like drivers slash mappings for these things. So like, basically, if a lot of a lot of gamers out there that have that have already set this up, we're using that same open source set of, of uh, mappings and stuff. So most of the time it's just going to be plug and play, you don't even have to worry about remapping. Yeah. Nice, nice, nice. Um, you can do mapping, if it doesn't work, there, there'll be a mapping option as well. Oh, nice. So you could uh, map something out if you didn't like the original setup or how it played on that. Um, controls are important and so on. Um, I want to go into, lately you guys have, uh, these last few days, well I want to say two or three days, Things are kind of bumping up on you. You guys are getting a little active again as far as uh, backers go. Um, and, boy, the coverage on you guys these last few days has been quite heavy. I've seen a lot of people putting out uh, videos about your product. Yeah, it's exciting, for sure. That's how you end up on the big show, all right. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you mean somebody else's show? Oh, no, no tell them. Oh, you like oh. guys games of beer. Okay. Two Towers of Justice so, we've got. Actually, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to uh, give a quick plug out to uh, Sega Lord, who did a really good review of your product. You guys let him get a hands-on, which is really cool. So yeah, what are, what, I mean, like, yeah, thanks, Sega Lord X. We know you're out there. Um, yeah, I mean, we've been in contact with him, and uh, we wanted to get we wanted to get an outside, you know, feedback on it. And, uh, you know, if he had seen it, I mean, like, we, we told him it was a prototype, uh, you know, there, nothing's on there was perfect, but, um, I mean, you can check out the video, but things went pretty well for him. The yeah. games played good. I mean, I mean, like, we kind of knew that they were going to play good, but, you know, there's, like, a nervousness there that things can go wrong. But, uh, yeah, thanks. We really are very appreciative to him. He, for, he for really liked that. your system. Yeah. It, uh, and, again, for him, that's something that's really unusual He's a little leery on these systems, and your system, he seemed to be quite taken with. Um, and, and, we, and again, we were, we were talking to him early on about the fact that, like, you know, a Sega, Gen a Sega CD 
repair job is going to do you in like a lot. Yeah. And if, and if you deal with that and then one other problem, it's like you've already blown like 120 bucks. So like. Yeah, it, it, it's fifty bucks problem. for them to fix the damn fuse. Well, let alone it's... a turbo graphics one. Yeah, I mean, geez. Oh yeah, forget the turbo graphics. You can't even afford to have that taken care of. That that's going to be a couple hundred out of pocket, no problem. So, except I love my turbo graphics. Don't be talking smack like I'm it's just bad. saying you. But you know how to work on your turbo graphics. Only because. I don't want to spend the money. <laughs> that's true. He's a cheap ass bastard. Yeah, that's true. Um. So again, he, lot so of, if I'm spending money on the seat, so, I'm just saying, so if I'm, my cheap ass will spend money on it. Yeah. I'm going to say so. Uh, we are some, for some reason our podcast is very big south of the border. <laughs> I, I don't know why we get really. We, yeah. Oh God. Yeah. We get rebroadcast down. Radio stations. Yeah, literally, literally on physical radio station stations south of the border. It's, it's weird. weird. But that being said, um, oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. but just that being said, I watched two different Spanish language videos on you guys today. <laughs> it's, I, it is. It has been such a such a trip searching, googling for CD, and especially on YouTube, the 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 all the stuff out there is just you know, it's nuts. Like I mean, coverage uh, in different languages. I mean, obviously, there's people that that like give a shit, and it, I mean, like whatever. It's it's basically hilarious, and I mean, as far as we're concerned, really, literally, any coverage is good because anybody with like some common sense is gonna like look it up and like look, read about it, and then they're gonna get some more info. Well, okay, so that's I'm gonna bring up the hater issue now because that does bring up that issue. Um, now there has been some project projects that have deserved hate in the past. I'm not. I, I, I'm going to say that some of the leeriness towards uh, this project and some other recent projects that are actually good are due to bad projects that have happened in the past. But I think the most important thing to remember here is transparency. You, there, there isn't another system plugged in the background when they're doing their best. Yeah. <laughs> you know, oh my god, yeah. Unless they've got some really good... Oh, uh, no, baby. No, no, no. I, I'm not, I, okay, so that Unless they got some good skills. Literally, oh, a guy called Tipster today called me out and said, well, he could be faking... He, he said Sega Lord X could be faking the videos. I'm thinking, do you know who Sega Lord X is? <laughs> no, he is not faking these videos. He would like nothing better. <laughs> yeah. It's like... But that's the kind of thing that you get from people. You know, it's like, you guys, again, you guys have been very transparent about this system. You put out a lot of good videos on this system. You've <coughs> given everybody the exact specs online. You've said where, you said where your, your shortcomings are. It was are. really one of the reasons why we wanted to have you on because of, uh, I mean, it, because of some of what I felt was, I kind of feel it's unfair. I think there's been a couple systems lately that have yeah. gotten some unfair press due to the bad actions of others. Some that we've even had on the show before that, had issues, and we gave them the benefit of the doubt, but we we didn't call out the issues that were there and come to find out there was fire behind it. But I don't see a whole lot here. Right. I see like I see everything that's supposed to be there. There. Right. Yeah. I mean, we, we're doing we're we're trying to do the right thing across the board. I mean, and uh, that's all there's to say. I, I mean, I don't know. I could feel like I feel like I could elaborate on that, but I'm not gonna. Like, I mean, we're yeah. just we're just we're 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 trying to be careful, and we're trying to give. Game like you know above all else, we're t trying to take care of the customer and give gamers options to keep playing their games for as long as they can. Yeah, you know, and, and again, you're not you're not selling pie in the sky here. I don't, and again, I, I for for that kind of price, I don't know what people are expecting. Like, <laughs> well, and uh, this is a, and again, it's a very interesting era too because like, again, you're looking at that like late '90s, early aughts kind of era. Consoles get start to become a lot more like computers at that point. Like, the, the hardware that runs a console becomes much more like what you're using in a PC. And it, you're getting a lot closer to accurate on that kind of gameplay, as long as, you know, the emulation works and the ears know input like, you know? Yeah, some of, the, some of the older stuff, you know, I can I can understand there's a certain nostalgia that we play. And again, I'm, I'm a media collector. Like, I, I'm the kind of guy who has 15 to 20 CRTs in his basement, slash in his car right now. Um... <laughs> Uh, yeah, I have like six CRTs sitting in my car right now, and I like I like playing some of the older consoles on TVs. But I don't envy you. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, they're not fun to move around, man. They're not. And I like, you I like have having one in your car today, don't you? There's, there's six monitors currently in my car. Yes. Uh, there's no, there's no room for a passenger to sit. <laughs> uh, trying to say is Travis has a problem. No, like, no, not at all. There's, there's definitely a place in the market for that convenience. You know, just to, just to have that era of systems that you can just play easily. Like it's just, it's, it's the plug and play. It's, it's. It's cheap. It's easy. Like, what more do you want for that? Yeah. Like that does bring the point. So your price points low, I, as far as my I'm concerned. Um, we were running the numbers. Yeah, we were running the numbers. <laughs> All right, we put it through our accountants, guys. You, yeah, our our accountants <laughs> say you guys are screwed. We even <laughs> um, we even pulled him out of jail. Yeah. Damn but um, thing. you guys really did bring this in at, at an amazing price, considering what what you're giving away for that price. Um, I'm gonna ask. You know, I, so I understand you both kind of work in the industry. Yeah, and you know, I just want to say thank you. This is so refreshing. Most people are like, oh, it's a retro pie that I can get for fourteen dollars, and I don't know. But a lot goes into product development and um, this, the whole supply chain, bringing it all together, assembly, getting the injection molds made. You know, yeah. Yeah, with our career background, we we were a bit able to. Um, make a good estimate and have everything in mind to pick a fair price that we know people will be attracted to and we'll be able to build a business off of. So that's how we got to the number. Yeah, because that, again, okay, considering what you're getting, that's an amazing number. I mean, but let's just say I went out and bought a couple of... of okay, yeah, you get the, okay, you well, buy your own, we're just going to guess them here. You buy your own internals, you get your $40 Raspberry Pi or whatever. You right. get... You get some casing for it, another ten to twenty bucks. You're, you know, you gotta buy a power, power supply. Power supply, yeah. You get another ten drive. bucks on that. The CD round drive. So that's right. a DVD, DVD burn. Yeah, DVD. Okay, DVD burn even more than that. You're right. Like twenty yeah. to thirty bucks. Yeah. You're at a hundred dollars right there. A controller. <laughs> yeah, another fifteen twenty bucks. Yeah, I mean, and all the work behind it. Yeah, yeah. and then you so put then, together and yourself. And then no labor. I so, waste the whole Saturday setting up some silly device. Like one that. single device. And then like the other that. thing is the secret sauce doesn't exist. In the public, there is the secret sauce of CD, which lets the game play off of the CD, yeah. which is which is original software, which isn't open source yet. But uh, I mean, that is that's that's what makes it all happen. Oh wait a minute! I, I think you just linked a little something there. You are you are considering maybe eventually making that open source, huh? <laughs> uh, yes. yes. Nice. So. Nice, very nice. So, for the community who wants to support somebody who's doing something for the community, for that reason alone, that they may release their software as open source, would be freaking awesome. Well, yeah, yeah, absolutely. By, by the license of all the other open source we're using, we will be providing the source for anything that has a license that requires us to do that. Nice. Um, so, we're obviously playing by those rules. Yeah, and so not other, the other bits and pieces yeah. that we want to fit into the mix. Uh, you know, we can we can choose how we want to go about that, but um, again, we want to do the right thing. Cool. Again, and that's that's part of this whole retro gaming community. It's uh, it's right. good good to have this kind of support for it. And again, we appreciate what you guys are doing for it because again, you sure the hell ain't making any money on that. Um, again, we've run we've run the numbers. We know how this works. Trust me. Um, so the product is again a reasonable price. Us who have jumped in already on the backing and who are going to are getting a really good deal. Um, are you guys kind of thinking about maybe releasing this as a commercial product? I mean, when I say commercial, t t you know, where you're going to have a website where people can, after this whole project is over, order them up? We just got to see how it goes. Yeah, we just got to see how it goes. Like, you know, we don't, we want to, like, like, I mean, the mission the mission is, is there. The mission is still clear. We want to provide this to as many gamers as it's going to be useful for it. Um, and, uh, and it just depends on how well, you know, how well things go. Okay. But, but that would be, that would obviously be, be great if we could keep, keep making these things. Oh yeah. I mean, I, again, you know, you look at the, 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 what people go through to get crappy ass emulators, you know, <laughs> I'm sorry, but to be able to get a good system like this. So again, we, again, we do this thing called Midwest Gaming Classic and boy, something like this would be great guns out, out there. I got to tell you that, that kind of, this is yeah. that definitely that kind of crowd's product. Um, I gotta ask because Drunken Larry is not here tonight. Um, if we used an adapter, what about light gun support? 
Um, light gun support is an interesting question. Um, so light guns inherently have uh, technical issues with uh, newer TVs, you know, like uh, LED or flat screen yeah, uh, LCD TVs. Right. So you, it would oh, need to be a light gun designed have, I actually support, have an like, H like a Wiimote type of device. Yeah, I actually no, I actually have an HDMI TV that's CRT. Oh, yeah, that's right. Early there was. Huge but on top of that, the software that, that runs probably yeah. is going to have some complications. It, it can be kind of finicky with that stuff too. Yeah. It, as an input device. Yeah. Um. Again, I, I've used them on other boxes. It, it can be a little tough to do that. Well, here you can go and buy yourself a downscaler, Tom. Oh, I yeah. I, I had to ask. I had to. Ask. I got one. So, so yeah. So no no promises yet, but this is exactly the type of feedback that we are listening out for, and we need to learn more about. Like, only, only because there so, were so many you. good CD-ROM like Go play! Yeah, 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 thank you, exactly. Yeah, time lot, time lot, crisis? Yes, one, yeah. Time crisis, I mean, come on. Those games were just absolutely amazing. It would be it would be kind of cool. And, and again, oddly enough, I have a CRT that has HDMI inputs. It's not that odd. Well, it was kind of... It was <laughs> uncommon. <laughs> it was uncommon. It You're was not that, that strange. strange. Yeah. You're about as strange as something I find in my cereal box strange. You're not that strange. <laughs> Sorry, I have to be the naysayer. Yeah, yeah just a little bit. Just a little bit. A little rough. Um, more, more wool. Yeah, yeah, a little more wool. I'll yeah. run down. Okay. Yeah. Well, well, okay, you can take a you can take a turn on. Everybody is now saying. Okay, more so wool. now Chris is the beer bitch. No, it's it's taking oh. turns. It's a community thing. Oh, it's a community thing. Okay, we'll go with the community thing. Sharing yeah. is caring, Tom. It's like in a <laughs> like in Euro trip. It's like, oh. I get it. Uh, he's the girl. You're the girl. Sometimes you're both the girl. <laughs> <laughs> And your trip was like underrated comedy. It was. It truly really really was. was. We watched the hell out of that, pal. I, I watched it in Europe. It was, you know. Like, just oh, now? you're kidding. You really? I watched it. I watched Europe. just got back from Europe. Yeah. A couple of weeks ago, yeah. <laughs> I had to watch it for old time's sake. No, that was a good call to watch while you were over there. See, All right, so. This so, isn't where I parked my car. <laughs> so, greatest technical hurdles. Let's go through it. I know there had to yep. be some horror stories. Yeah, well, I mean, I guess the initial the initial thing, like I was just talking about, was like figuring out how um, how to like live transport the CD data in real time on the fly to the emulators, like um, in a way that was going to work across the different emulators and not, and so I wasn't going to have to implement um, CD-ROM like kernel code, like you know, as many times like per emulator. So um, without giving too much away there, that that was the that was like the initial kind of like fun bit that was like stimulating to me. I was like, how am I going to solve this problem? But yeah, because you can't have you once, can't drag behind. Once, uh, yeah, exactly. And so once, so basically, like I got things. Well, there were a couple things. So yeah, I got that working, but then it was dragging behind. So then I had to solve that problem. And then and then once that problem was solved, um, you know things still weren't perfect like i mean it was very like very much manual so like for example detecting the different types of disk each disk more or less has its own signature this part wasn't quite as hard but it was very interesting and i tweeted about this but um at the time we were considering we were running on different hardware and considering uh 3do being supported and uh and so I was basically, so this, this, again, this is, this wasn't like a real challenge, but this is like an anecdote I'm basically talking about. And, uh, so I was basically figuring out, okay, like how does, how do I write detection software that's going to like detect a 3DO game versus a Sega CD game or whatever. Mm -hmm. And, uh, on the 3DO games, I go to look in like the typical spot where, uh, where you go to find like some sort of header or like data about the, about the disc. And I literally see I am a duck, I am a duck, I am a duck, I am a duck, <laughs> repeating, repeating for like, you know, a lot. And I was like, what the fuck is happening? And, um, and then I, and then I eventually Google that in like the engineers at 3DO, they padded their, uh, they like added data padding to like, you know, sections of their, of their CD and their like own custom format with I am a duck repeating. I shit you not. <laughs> oh, awesome. Yeah, I learned, yeah, learned uh, so yeah, that, yeah. And then, but then, but then, you know, getting everything together, getting duck. everything playing nice together. Um, and, uh, to nerdism. and then, and then, uh, yeah. <laughs> and then also, and then, you know, and then like also the cost, bringing the cost down. I mean, because we did not start at the cost that would have made our current price reasonable whatsoever. 
we like really had to figure out how we were going to make it affordable. So, um, and, and I mean, we had to, we had to make sacrifices for that, but I think the end result definitely, I mean, it's a, I think it's still a very like neat, compelling system. Just so you know, none of the sacrifices were small puppies or kittens. Wait. Whoa, whoa, whoa. The majority of you them were not small I was just going to say, you didn't ask them de yeah. definitively on that. Yeah. They may have sacrificed a few Just small a dog. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a dog or two. Yeah, no, no great loss there. No great loss there. So, um, <sighs> yeah, anything particularly you want to say about the product before we go into I, I still want to talk about the haters a bit more. Oh, come on. I don't know. I'm, I, I am all about the Let hate. Let the stuff. hate go. No, no, no. no, no. no. I, I tweeted, basically, when, when the conversation started, my I tweeted. My haters are my motivators. <laughs> what um, the fuck? And it's a Star Wars tweet. And it says, what is this? It says, resist the hate or something. No, hang on. It's, it's, a, class, it's a classic quote from Empire Strikes Back. Yes, let the hate flow through you. <laughs> <laughs> Again. <laughs> Don't give in to hate. That leads to the dark side. I'm perfectly good with it leading to the dark side, thank you. Amen. <laughs> yes, exactly. So, um, again, what I want to tell people who is, who, and again, more than a few comments on all of this. Peanut gallery comment. Haters be hating, prostitutes be going to be anal. Just saying. Okay. <laughs> That's a class. I'm much you know, better with that. Games and beer. Our peanut gallery is oh, the best. No. Um, Ooh. You know, here's the thing. You guys have addressed everything on the Indiegogo page. All people have to really do is go and kind of read your description, and you just, every, every little negative comment I read, everything that people were like, well, blah, 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 this, blah, 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 that, you guys already addressed. This is part of the whole transparency thing I, I think that I really like about your project, <laughs> is you guys have already said where things might be a little bit shortcoming, where things need a little work. You put the videos out so people can see it, You've got a prototype. It's not. It, I've heard people will say it's another vaporware. Blah blah blah. Have you not watched the videos that you guys have put out? I mean, I don't think they watched the videos. Evidently not. It's it's, it's the, the, honestly, people just fake news. Yeah, just <laughs> read a little bit. Watch a video or two. I mean, again, literally, I wa I I heard somebody question again whether um uh, Sega Lord X was 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 faking it. I mean, think about that. That's some. That's that's some extreme stuff. That's blasphemy. Yeah. No, serious, it was. It was like, think about what the hell you just said. I just, I really, I was just stunned when he came back to, at me with that. It's like, Lord Beer. this guy who's got, you know, 20,000 plus followers is going to fake something on his on his site. Again, people, again, it's just, there's always controversy about this stuff. Because people have been burned before. I know they have. Like, you don't understand, like, I but, think that's like, mostly what it is. I think most of the time, people are just an asshole. Yeah. More to the point. I, I, I'm going to go People with just time suck. People just suck. That's why I want this, so I can play video games okay. and ignore people. <laughs> exactly. Thank you. When, once we have your system, we can just kind of lock ourselves in the room and not pay attention to any of the crap going on around us. <laughs> All right. So um, I, I will say that we are we are planning to do a um, a new. We're, we're planning on a new video sometime soon where we talk about. What, what's in the box, basically. And we talk about, you know, like, here's what we're using for this, here's what we're using for that. We're not going to give away secret sauce, but we are gonna but we will give away stuff that people are asking about sometimes, and we're going to just say, like, like, you and we're, we're going to explain why it literally doesn't matter. I mean, like, what's the fact of letters, like, it, didn't, it, does not, it doesn't make sense for us to, like, design our own motherboard when we can use, when we, you know, we can get something an off-the-shelf type of a thing. Well, this goes back to with this. That'll that'll do exactly what we want it to do, and it's available right now at a decent cost. So, like, it makes sense for us to use that. Like, we're mm -hmm. not going to reinvent the wheel. Help right. The this goes well. back down to keeping the supply chain to a reasonable cost and available. You know, if you start doing custom work, you get the lead times that are involved with custom work. You get the cost that's involved with custom work. Again, you guys are putting out a product for a, a price that is again. Well, unfortunately, they're the slave labor. Involved in this, it's the coding that becomes the hard part. It's getting the uh, parts to actually work together. Right. I, you know, it, again, I, I know you pointed it out like a dozen times, and we said it ad nauseum. It's it's not that you can't get a Raspberry Pi to do this. Can you get it to do it in the form factor and without the latency issues that are just 
it easily. You can easily do it without the latency issue. And it just, I've worked with Raspberry Pi enough. I know. Uh, it's why we used plug-in controllers two years ago at MGC is because of the latency issue that we had with it. And we, uh, I, I was putting the output through, uh, <laughs> I was actually uh, scaling it down a little bit and then bringing it up through the TV to, to uh, have the TV handle some of it. Right. Uh, not, that's kind of the opposite of doing what happens, uh, by the way, uh, for like if you, if you have like all the filters on a 360, you know how you turn that off and put it in V mode. Basically, that's what I was doing. I was basically having, I, I wasn't doing that. I was doing the opposite of it. I was turning everything off to, and scaling it to get it to uh, work properly. And that's, it's doing that all for you automatically. And I'm going to tell you, it did take some time to get it right. I think we did a good job. Uh, but it required a whole bunch of crap laying around. Right, where again, this is all set and ready to go. I think a big point is, uh, compared to a lot of the other guys here, I'm not nearly as big a collector. I have the systems I grew up with, and I have those, and I like collecting for those. But you have like the turbo graphics things, things that, like, yeah, they're cool for me to own stuff. This is an easy entry point for someone like me. To be like, hell yeah, why not? Yeah, yeah. yeah, pick up a few. Yeah, pick up a few games for these systems. Exactly. I mean, like that you otherwise would have locked out of for sure. Right. The, the, the you know Turbo Graphics great. Not and, and I I do not own a physical Turbo Graphics yet. I've been looking for one, but I haven't found the deal I'm looking for. So you know it, it always comes down to that. So meanwhile, is, he's bought four Amigas. I, I, you know, <laughs> different. Oh, deals. I'm sorry. Different right? deals. <laughs> Different I'm sorry, that, I, I meant you to may, think that. You may want to think, think that, that out loud. I said that out loud. But I feel that is a very valid point because that is what, like, when I first was, like, when the guys made that, we started talking about this, that what really piqued my interest, like, oh, TurboGrafx-16. Ah, things that I don't own that I wouldn't probably go out of my way to buy because there's not that nostalgia for me. Like, I didn't grow up playing those. I didn't have one. So it's like, but I can buy this and play them. Yeah, it's yeah. a gateway console. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and if I, we're still drinking, we're still drinking Wolf over here. What's what's happening over there? Uh, we are drinking some Monster beers. We're they drinking suck. everything here. Look at just if you get a chance, look at the video. The table's already full. Oh, yeah. but no. Also, like I'm still recovering from Saturday. <laughs> No, it's rough. They had uh, we uh, they had uh, an interview in the morning, and then they just decided to keep drinking. Yeah, with the folks we from drank, Victor, and really yeah. for and like they were really hours. beer friendly too. Yeah, yeah. I showed my nipple. I'm they, were out of, they, were, <laughs> they were out of uh, uh, Beirut, right? Beirut. They're out of Beirut. Beirut. They're going to be on a double ender with you, by the way, which is a hilarious name for that. But I'm I'm hearkening back to the no no. Let's go. I'm going with double ender now. on this one. Yeah, this is a double ender interview. So, and, uh, <laughs> double ender. You just say. The DP of gaming. <laughs> Just call it double headed. So we're um, getting sloppy, uh, sloppy second. Yeah, pretty much so. Actually, Great our show. intro is pretty I messed up by the other one, so you guys are probably going to be first. But <laughs> 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 Our intro is pretty messed up. Yeah, Magic so, technology. Yeah. We ended up doing a, what, a three hour run or something, doing the G2B a, breakfast yeah, club. I got home at like noon. Like, it was like after it was the, was the like, best, worst crap. decision we ever made. Yeah, yeah well, we, we, we made a lot of that. All right, so, guys, we're going to do one more time. Let's talk about your project one more time before we uh, take this out. Where can people find you at? We're on Indiegogo. The campaign's live right now, about 20 days remaining. And um, we're a little over a third of the way to our funding goal of $50,000. So check us out. Um, we're doing live videos most nights, um, demoing the unit. Um, and watch out for a review by um, Metal Jesus Rocks. Oh, nice. Coming up in the next nice. few days. Oh, really nice. Yeah, so hopefully that'll be a good exposure for us as well. So fingers crossed. Yeah, look, I watched their uh, their Sunday night show or their Sunday night uh, thing on the plane flying back from L.A. I was literally watching it as I was flying back from L.A. on Sunday night. Um, Thanks. So you guys, uh, one more time, the, the if it... The, the, the beta's not gone, the early bird's gone, but you guys still have this, the, the standard package, the standard package is? Um, $125 for a wireless controller in the CD unit, or you can um, throw in a few extra bucks and get the limited edition green. transparent green, yeah. jungle That's, green. That really looks good. Very retro as well. That was very retro looking. That was a nice choice okay. there. Angry Thank about you. that one because I did the pre. I, I, I at a hundred dollars, of course, the miser came out. I know, yeah, I'm me too. I, okay. I, 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 I should have probably got the green one too, but oh well, <laughs> a little late now. Any of you guys beta testers? 
No, no, we didn't. I, think I, I, on the beta. I did not get in on the beta. The beta was already sold out by the time I jumped in. Okay. But uh, when I'm on. But yeah, no, it uh, again. Well worth looking into. We're gonna have links to all of this on our website. You guys definitely want to check out the videos that have been done. There's plenty of. No, I ended up on the early bird. Yeah. So videos the, on Facebook, and then we get we get we're on Twitter and Instagram. Yeah, and there's tons of YouTube videos on them as well. They've got their own YouTube channel. Um, other people have done YouTube videos on them. I uh, again watch the videos. Don't necessarily read all the comments. Again, I think uh, the videos say everything that you need to know about the system. Um, the people who have ha actually had their hands on it. Again, talking about. Uh, Sega Lord X. Um, really, again, I'm, I'm interested to see the next hands-on. Um, oh, speaking of hands-on, let's talk about your, your very first prototype, because we didn't mention that. What did you guys make the original prototype case out of? Uh, when you say original prototype, are you referring to a Lego prototype? Well, yes, I, I might be. I might be. Prototype? No, no, no. I might be talking about that Lego unit, which is in some of your videos. Yeah, um, well, we've got, we've got multiple Lego units. Um, the first one was made with real Legos, and then uh, there was a sale on the fake Legos, so I, I bought a bunch of those. Oh, wait, they, Duplo they Blocks, really? Yeah, I was going to say. Duplo Blocks. <laughs> <That's> awesome. <laughs> Sorry, bring the cost down. Exactly. Right. No, now now we need keep that, yeah, keep that price point. Now we need a Connects version. Oh okay, yeah, there you go. But so, uh, yeah, so literally you, you modded that you, were, you did your original case design in Lego. Well, we, well, we started with a big optical drive, and it like didn't even occur to me Just that we not. could be using a slim <laughs> standard file optical drive. Like, oh, so literally, I have in my basement right now 30 desktop optical oh, drives <laughs> from a guy that was just getting rid of them. Because I was like, all right, well, we'll need to use these for the beta testing. And I just splurged on it, and they, and they didn't cost much, but I literally have this big box full of the big, clunky drives. At least they're not CRT says. Yeah. <laughs> so at least you can drive um, your car with a passenger. <laughs> and then, and then after like, after going through like, you know, multiple common sense reinforcement rounds with uh, Chris, we finally sailed down a little bit. Um, uh, In but, size, not capability. Yeah. <laughs> Equally potent. <laughs> And then so yeah, the, the, the original, the right. original design was like a more or less of a harness that would bundle together the various bits, and including the large drive, uh, and then until we until we could get it into its own box, and then we and then we had Lego Rev Two. But actually, um, what do you guys think of the look? Very curious for your feedback on the current aesthetic. I, I, I like I like the logo that you guys came up with a lot. Again, it gives me that very late nineties kind of CD ROM base. And again, like it really conveys the package. Like, okay, you look at it and you're like, okay, this is a CD based console you know, console that'll play C D games. Uh, I, again I like I like small form factor. I personally have a lot of gear, so something that doesn't take up a hulking much more uh, on my uh, on my shelf is a is a nice plus. But it, it still looks nice. Again it's I, I like the green. I, I if I if I go for one, I, I think I might go for that just because I like weird colors. But well, even uh, like I'll be jealous of you at that point. Yeah, so am I actually. Like, like I was saying, I, should I like the design of it. It does it. make me think of like retro PCs and stuff with like the built-in grates on the in the corners and stuff. Yeah, that's what it makes me think of. I was like, that's I like it. Yeah, overall, I've got to say, I like the small form factor, too. I think that's the big thing. Yeah, um, I, I think we were talking about it before the show, that uh, it's uh, thrown in your backpack type Right, thing. and uh, you take it with you. Yeah, I, I know a lot of people are like, well, I could emulate this on my laptop. Well, my laptop, when I'm at a gaming convention, I'm using my laptop. I can't plug it in to let people play, but I sure as heck can throw this sucker on there and yeah. let a couple of people play it. It uses very little room. Uh, I can hide it behind a monitor. It's good for shows. I mean, yeah, uh, we, that's we, exactly what I was we, thinking. It's we great do for a shows. Lot of shows. We, do, we, we take it and do a lot of retro shows. So something like this is perfect for us. It's something we can just plug in and go. Again, like the, stand, the stand's a nice call too. Now you can like actually display it. Yeah, display. I thought I thought that was a good touch. Kind of, it gives it that vertical display, which it, it again, which is also like from I, a space standpoint. Space standpoint, I like that one of my favorite things about the PlayStation Two was. You could run it built to do that, and I was like, "Oh, so I can save space." Because I mean, at that point, we everyone had switched off from CRTs and things like that, so flat screens, but still, you didn't have a lot of space to put it because you saw the small spaces, like the like the entertainment centers, the CRTs. So 
it made it work really well. Like six I don't know what you got one of those damn stands in those. Mine was still. Yeah, I know, I know the stand. I just never got one with one. Yeah, but it still stands without a stand. Yeah, because it's a square. So, watch the video. This is not stand well. Do you have the nice intro sound or music? Just the CD sitting there. I didn't. I didn't get a chance to fully listen. Oh, are you talking? You mean like a little like boot up? Yeah, like or like losing his like money. All like all like PlayStation 3DO and something. Yeah, like, like, like a, a logo that, sound or something that like that. Yeah, it's just yeah, sitting yeah, on the screen. It's on our YouTube. That's oh. the you, yeah, if you go on our YouTube, can you check it out right now? And uh, it's basically Travis. Uh, quickly. Travis, bring it, it up. There's a post it right there. There. Yeah, that's it. There we go. Yeah, yeah. 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 Can you guys put the link into the thing? We certainly will. Put it in the chat. Put it in the chat right now. Yeah. But we, we will have a link on the show as well. Yeah, I, 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 like I, I think I shoot me that the name of the TV chat. I will. Uh, yeah, CD based systems are waiting for that. Uh, yeah, for something to be put something in. To be put in. in. Yeah. you have to have something to know what's yeah. running. Yeah, it's uh, again, it's uh, between like uh, the logo, the logo and the name just really convey the system well. I, I think you guys did a great job coming up with that. It's yeah, very, the logo it's very too. Cool. It's really yeah, really sweet. Yeah, it, a lot. thank you. It definitely has the right feel. You just put that in G2B tag. Yeah, he told me. Yeah, he did. So, uh, all right. So, <laughs> Rob, I, I suppose we should wrap this up. Oh, he's gonna pull out. Let me. Wait, wait, wait. We we're gonna blast your music out first, and then we'll wrap this up. This is not actually a wrap up. It is a connection. Ah, right. so it's a segue to the next episode. That's right. This is your episode is gonna segue into our next episode. <laughs> Wow. Well, thank you, Travis. I really did like that, actually. <laughs> so, That's um, good. So, again, we'll have links to all, all of your information on our website. You didn't give them the website? Are you going to do your job? You I did, did do my job. You did your job. One more time. All right, one more time. Sorry. If people want to... Yeah, Rob was not paying attention. I'm sorry. One more time, if people want to find out more about your product or back it, where they should they go? Indiegogo. All right, and if they just type in... S E E D I C D all over. Right, they will find. Oh my God, everywhere. You guys have again. The, you've got, been getting a lot of good media coverage. It's good to see. Looking um, forward to seeing Metal Jesus is Rock. Yeah, overview of yeah, it. Yeah, that's freaking yeah. awesome. Um, we will definitely uh, again, hopefully, be uh, following you guys and putting up more updates as they come out on our websites. Nineteen um, days left as yeah. of this recording. So. 40%. You guys need to get Friday, on this. Friday, when this comes out, it'll be 15 days left. So Yeah, so get your ass on this. It's an amazing project. Again, like I said, at, at, as of this point, they're almost up to 40%. I mean, they're just shy of 40%, which is great. You guys had a fairly short uh, uh, start on this, though. You only went one month, right? Yeah, just I mean, over. Just over it, a month. If you, if you let it, I, I mean, if you let it drag on too long, then it, it gets to be sad. <laughs> yeah. oh, oh, so we, oh. we were thinking like let's let's see how it goes. Well, uh, again, the actual con- thing is, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, considering the short time you've been up, the, uh, you again there was a there was a, the, the the sudden initial burst, and the things quieted down for like about three days, and then all of a sudden now you guys have started going great guns again. It's awesome. Yeah, it's really exciting. Um, basically, we got b- between the between the Cycle Lord preview. And uh, Pat, the NES punk, covered CD um, out of the blue, just totally organic, um, just uh, on Sunday. Yeah, Sunday, he, they put out their, their podcast. And didn't hate it. No, he, yeah, had, he, had, and, he had good things to say. I watched that already. Which, I mean, like, he hates that's everything. awesome. Like, you know, we'll, we'll take it. We'll take whatever. Um, so, I mean, that, that, that was a lot of exposure. So, um Definitely contributing to a pickup again, and uh, we've sent out some updates recently. Uh, we uh, we made some flyers. We literally sent We're out taking it today. to the streets. We, oh. we made some flyers, and we've, we've we've asked our backers to put our flyers around wherever they can. If you guys want to see the flyers, uh, <laughs> we'll send you the link, and then um, we've got the link. But yes, they're they're in an update. Yeah, they're in an update on our campaign page. You can print out these flyers, put them around. Uh, we'll send you a sticker if you send us a photo of you with the flyer. Okay, so, uh, I, I am going to say they've uh, gotten another backer as we've been broadcasting. So, uh, so whoever is watching the show who just backed them, good stuff on that. I mean, literally just came you. through. Thank you so much. So, uh, but I mean, what, what I will say is, if if the campaign fails, <coughs> that's not going to be the la- that's not going to be the end of CD. We have built up, uh, you know, an interest level, and we've. 
we've got a Facebook page and we've got, uh, you know, we've got followers on Twitter and Instagram. We'll be back and we'll, I mean, we'll address specific things that have, we've learned in this, we've learned so much in the course of this campaign. So, um, well, I mean, again, we're just going to ride the storm and see how things go. All right. Well, 19 days can bring a lot. Uh, Dang yeah. straight. Just ask the last presidential election. <laughs> oh, oh, ouch. Oh, ouch. Oh. All right, Rob, take us oh, out of the show. Just anyway. Kill it now. Oh. Kill it now, Rob. Kill it now. Oh, it hurts. Anyway, <laughs> thank you very much for watching. <laughs> Guys, kids, and beer. Oh, wait. Next. Vindicta. Yes. Right. Coming next, Vindicta. Totally screwed the pooch on that one, but don't worry because we have editing, and that's going to totally fix that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Those of you watching the live stream right now, thank you for watching Guys, Games, and Beer. You can check us out at www.guysgamesandbeer.net if you're interested in the CD. Of course, check out our Facebook site, www.facebook.com slash guysgamesandbeer. We're posting stuff about it. There. Also, check out our Twitter feed where I have it under advisement that we're giving away free copies of Vindicta this week. Ooh. We will also be giving them away on free game. Dang! If you are interested, I can bet you there's going to be some CD links there too. Ooh. All right. All right. Well, thank you very much for coming on the show. Thank you. Thanks so for much. having us. Thank you. Cheers. 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 Uh, Wisconsin. 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 Thank you. Cheese. Oh, beer.